Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to part two of this video. Before we get into the immigration stuff, I did want to uh, bring some information on a couple of things going on and uh, want to let, you know, make note of this because it's it's important uh, because this part of it is tied into the gig economy, uh, what we're going to talk about here. And then I'm going to move on to the immigration part of the video. So I hope you watched the first part to understand why things are actually going on and, you know, the Cloward and Piven plan we covered in the first part. OK, so, uh, by the way, shout out to Mr. Fats Variety Show. Uh, that's P-A-P-H-A-T-S, Fats Variety Show. I want to give him a shout out because he had when I was searching for this information, I, I saw, a, like I was doing it on YouTube, and I saw a video that had to do with Tony Hsu from DoorDash, the CEO, that's been selling his stock. Now, I pulled up an article here from December 16th of 2023, but you if you look up and you look hard enough, because I have a few other um, articles that I found, one from just about even three, two or three weeks ago, and one from a few months ago, and then going all the way back to 2023. But the bottom line is, is Tony Hsu is selling his stock in DoorDash. Now, he is a 10% owner of DoorDash. Obviously, what has happened over since he started the company was he sold the company to the big the bigwigs. Who are the bigwigs? Who are the elite? That would be the people at the World Economic Forum, the people who own the stocks in the company, and then tying it back to BlackRock, BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street. There's a lot of investors, a lot of these people uh, belong to the World Economic Forum. But anyways, let me read you the article here. It says, DoorDash Incorporated CEO Tony Hsu sells over $13 million in company stock. In a significant move within the food delivery industry, Tony Hsu, the CEO and 10% owner of DoorDash, Inc., NASDAQ Dash, has sold a substantial number of shares in the company on December 12, 2023. The insider executed a sale of 132,300 shares of DoorDash Incorporated, a transaction that has caught the attention of investors and market analysts alike. <laughs> Who is Tony Hsu? Tony Hsu is the co-founder of DoorDash, Inc., and has been serving the company the, as the company's CEO since the inception. Under the leadership, under his leadership, DoorDash has grown to become the leading food delivery service in the United States, competing with other giants in the industry. Hsu's vision and strategic direction have been pivotal to the company's expansion and its ability to adapt to the rapidly changing landscape of on-demand food delivery about DoorDash, Inc. Uh, DoorDash, Inc. is a technology company that connects people with the best of their neighborhoods. The company operates logistics platform and facilitates door-to-door -door delivery, allowing users to order food on from other um, and other items from local and chain restaurants. Founded in 2013, DoorDash has been exponential growth, leveraging an innovative platform to meet the Increasing demand for delivery services. Okay, I could go on and on, but the bottom line is we all know who DoorDash is, right? Most of you do who work for DoorDash and uh, Uber and all these other companies. Remember, all of these companies are all tied in together. Who are they tied in with? With a lot of those people that was <laughs> talked about in the first part of this video, because this is part two, folks. Remember that. Now, um, like I said, if you go online and you go to Yahoo!, you can look up all of the times that Tony Hsu has sold sold uh, his his stock. He's he's dumping this stock slowly. Obviously, if he did it in one big f fell swoop, it would raise alarm bells, right? Why is he doing this? Because he knows it's a sinking ship, folks. He knows that the company is going to go under. I called this out two, years, uh, two, two three years ago. I said they're either going to go bankrupt at some point or they're going to merge with another company because there's no way that the gig economy can sustain the way it currently is, especially with uh, the way the uh, economy is and how much 
prices are going up because just bottom line, most average people are not ordering DoorDash anymore. They, if anything, they're cutting back from it, you know, or they've cut it out of their budget completely. That's one of the bad faults. Then you have the, there's so many things. Dino from um, Saying It Like It Is channel has been doing some really good videos lately, you know, covering and filling in the gaps on things that are going on. Um, he just did one recently, and uh, he, it's it's a good video, you know, talking about the different aspects of why why is it slow in the gig economy and this and that. Now, the summer by default is normally slow because people go on vacations, people do things, and um, some people, you know, they cook out a lot or they eat out a lot or, they, or they're on vacation or they're just cutting back and enjoying um, – time for themselves and not worrying about DoorDash. A lot of people use DoorDash in the winter times and stuff, but the thing is people can't afford the fees anymore. Average people. Now, rich people, yeah, they're still using the services because it's not affecting them. But then you're competing with all the millions of drivers and all of the illegal immigrants, which we'll be getting into illegal immigrants later on in this video. But I wanted to make you make you aware that the CEO, you should be probably watching all of the CEOs from all of these companies because if if I looked up, and I haven't done it, but if I looked up uh, Dara Kashashahi, I would bet that he's selling some of his stocks. But this is an indicator, folks, of this whole thing coming to a big crash. And eventually when they pull the uh, global reset, the digital reset, or they do away with the dollars and stuff, especially in America... That's that's the end of the game, folks. Um, and, you know, a lot of drivers, I mean, can't even make ends meet now. My friend James, he's he's barely making, if he can even make 100 bucks in a day, he's making between, you know, 50 sometimes to 60. Uh, some t a couple times he's made 25. I mean, it's real bad now. And the summer is usually, yeah, right? So what what is everyone hoping? They're hoping that... Um, that in the winter time or in the fall, it's going to become better, right? All right, let's uh, go to the next uh, thing here. Okay, so I found this clip from the World Economic Forum. Um, and I think this is from about a year or maybe even two years ago. But listen to what Klaus Schwab says about Uber and about driving, like for drivers, right? And what, what the cars will be like and all of that. Just check this out. This is from one of the shorts that I found online. Oh, it's a meeting. When we meet for the 20th Governance Summit, you will use the app like Uber. <laughs> but not anymore to call some driver. What did he just say? Not anymore to call some driver. Let's, let's listen to that again. Let me back it up. Not anymore to call some driver. Like Uber. But not anymore to call some driver. But an uh, automatically guided car, a self-driven car, <laughs> will come to your hotel or wherever you are. A self-driven car. So that's the goal, by the way, folks. And I've been talking about this for a while. Now, people say, oh, well, that's way far off. It's not that far off that, than you think. I've been watching videos in, uh, I think it's Arizona. And actually, Jeff Watts from uh, Uber Jeep Arizona, which is Mike Drop Barbecue now channel, he could probably tell you. There's, he's probably seen Waymo. Waymo is one of the uh, robot cars. And I've seen them pick up people. But I've also seen videos where the cars break down and stuff. So they do have some problems, but they, they're definitely planning to bring that in. All right, let me, let me just back this up, and I'm going to let it play through. You will use the app like Uber, but not anymore to call some driver, but an uh, automatically guided car, a self-driven car. We'll come to your hotel or wherever you are, and we'll bring you to the airport. You know, Los Angeles is one of the cities with the heaviest traffic, who told me in 2030, Los Angeles will be private car-driven free. 
And since Did you hear that? Private car driven free by 2030. In other words, no private cars. So what are they planning on doing? They're trying to get people out of their cars now, their, their gas cars and everything else. Will they succeed that? Well, we don't know. We're only in 2024. Will allow to transform highways into parks and other public spheres. <laughs> okay, folks. So you heard it from Klaus Schwab's mouth right there about the cars, right? Some people who claim we are now in a deglobalizing world, but actually, I would say we have to re-globalize this world. We have to make sure that we strengthen cooperation because, as it was mentioned, we are faced with issues which are of existential importance for humankind. We through joint efforts, we could really make this world a better place by using the capabilities we have. <laughs> Do you really think he want, they want to make the world a better place? They're trying to ruin the world as it is right now. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you one more clip here, and then we're going to move on to the immigration part of it. But remember, I always told you everyone that there's an agenda that's going on a real agenda and it's called well it used to be called sustainable development goals for the 21st century it was called agenda 21 and then they changed it to agenda 2030 but they they've really moved swiftly to make these things happen so let's listen to what schwab says here at this pivotal moment I see several priorities for the global agenda. <laughs> we must continue to fight against the global pandemic. We oh. must revitalize the global economy and accelerate its transition to net zero. <laughs> we must preserve biodiversity by deploying nature-based solutions. And we must narrow the gap between the rich and the poor to achieve more sustainable global development. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they really want to help us, right, folks? So, you know, if you want to learn more about uh, what's going on, you should uh, go to the World Economic Forum on here on YouTube and check out the videos. I mean, some of them are really long and drawn out and boring, but they, uh, they, they say a lot in these videos, folks. All you got to do is watch. All right, let's move on to immigration here. Okay, so this is where I left off in uh, part one. So let's roll it. Gentlemen from Iowa seek recognition. I ask unanimous consent to address the House for one minute and revise and extend. Without objection, the gentlewoman's recognized for one minute. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise today to address the on no ongoing crisis at our border. When President Biden took office in January 2021, he inherited common sense immigration policies such as Remain in Mexico and Title 42 that worked to keep our nation safe, reducing the flow of illegal drugs and gang members. Unfortunately, President Biden immediately ceased construction of the border wall and enacted policies favoring illegal immigrants over Americans. Thankfully, the Supreme Court has challenged the legality of President Biden's policies and overturned the remo removal of Title 42. Now it is Congress's time to act. Both Republicans and Democrats acknowledge that our immigration system is broken, but only Speaker McCarthy's commitment to America has a plan to repair our broken immigration system. This Congress, Republicans will pass legislation that secures our border, stops the influx of illegal drugs and criminals, in uh, catch and release loopholes and human trafficking. Americans deserve a government that works in their best interest, and these policies will create a safe and secure nation. <laughs> now, you don't really believe that this nation is going to be safe and secure. They have already, they've already done the damage because for the past, well, at least five years, these illegal immigrants have been flooding the borders and just coming in. So, you know, do you know how hard it would be to to uh, deport everyone that's already here? 
and then think about what would happen. I mean, that's where it leads into a civil war type situation because the people that are already here, do you think that they're going to want to go back to the countries that they that they left? No. So I don't believe anything they say. They, they, the government is not there to help you folks. All right, let's move on here. Okay, so this clip here from uh, this video is from a homestead uh, prepping channel. And this guy's name is Cohen. I forgot the full name, but I think he's going to show it in this video. But the reason for this video is because he was covering the immigration crisis, right? And this video is not more than probably a month old, maybe three weeks old or so. But it's it's just clarifying more things that are going on with immigration. And then we're going to lead into some other parts of the immigration thing that I want to show you. So... And remember, the first part of this video that you saw from the other day or whenever you saw it, because this is part two, it talked about the Cloward and Piven plan. In that plan, it talked about how they would use immigration to get set these agendas to push them through, right? All right, so here we go. Giant Tyson laying off 1,200 workers after closing its pork factory in Perry, Iowa, only later to announce 52,000 jobs for migrants. The company's excuse, migrants are getting the jobs that Americans don't want. I didn't think it was legal, Senator, to ax American workers and hire en masse illegal aliens. <laughs> well, sounds, sounds like the gig economy, right, folks? Because that's what they've done with the gig economy. I remember even when I, you know, occasionally take a private Uber, and by the way, a lot of these people are really nice people. I'm not saying that they're not nice people, but but the problem is, is the agenda that's going on is to help the government and these um, these organizations push their agenda through, right? And we are having such a bad time in the U.S. already that we can't. I mean, they're, they're giving out all kinds of free stuff, folks, to... Um, to the people, I mean, to the immigrants coming in. I mean, they're getting uh, EBT cards. They're getting free cash. They, they're staying. A lot of them are living in the hotels. In my town alone where I live, there's like three hotels that are like three quarters full with Im illegal immigrants that are living there because they, they have to house them somewhere or, or else they'll be roaming the streets, right? So that's how they get away with it. They put them up in hotels temporarily. All right. Shouldn't be, Jesse. And we're certainly going to look into whether we can change that, assuming Tyson is operating legally, which we don't even know if they are. We don't know the details of this. All we know, Jesse, is that they are firing American workers and hiring illegal aliens to replace them. With See, this now that that's where it's wrong. That's where it's completely wrong. So you have workers who are already working in different industries and stuff, but they're going to fire these the American people to bring in illegals. Now, that that right there should be illegal. The person already has the job and then they're going to fire him. But think about it. Not only that, but let's say you're going for the job, right? You want to get hired at a job. Well, these places will end up trying to hire the illegal people before they'll hire or, or the immigrants before they hire Americans. And the Americans should have first, first dibs to these jobs. This is why the gig economy is so watered down and why people can't make any money because of that. Now, again, I mentioned in the first video about uh, Mike Drop Barbecue, Jeff Watts. He's been doing some really good videos on immigration. You, you definitely should go over to his channel and check out the last like few videos he, he did. Uh, and he's continuing to put them out on, on uh, immigration. And you can kind of tie it into this, you know. So anyways, let's continue. Causing a lot of uproar, millions and millions of people coming across the border, and we're hearing American jobs are getting slashed, and they've got replacements with special treatment. And the jobs come with perks, not just health insurance. Tyson's also offering lawyers to its illegal alien workers and time off to attend immigration hearings <laughs> in 2034, of course. All the reason to be seeing headlines like this, Tyson Foods faces boycott after report claims company hires migrants and all the stuff you just heard. So the buzz on the street is, is Tyson Foods headed down the same road as Bud Light. And another topic people are bringing up, 
Is Tyson Foods moving to growing food and vats, lab-grown meat, or are they already doing it? We're going to go over this news that's happening now. All right, so it's Riverside Homestead Life. That's the channel. And actually, he's a pretty good channel. Some of the things I don't agree with him with, but... Uh, My name is Cohen here at Riverside Homestead, points. and if you're brand new here, welcome. If you guys are into prepping tips, emergency preparedness, and most of all, news and awareness, stuff that you want to know about, be sure to hit that notification bell so you guys can stay up to date. Let's jump into this one. Thanks for starting this video off with a like. Now let's dive into what's popping up all over the news. People are always asking me, is this food giant selling fake meat? And I'm going to give you the answer on that. And we're going to go into details with that. But first, let's talk about how Tyson's heading down the same road as Bud Light and why. All right, me trying and Tyson laying off 1,200 workers after closing its pork factory in Perry, Iowa, only later to announce 52,000 jobs for migrants. <laughs> the company's excuse, 52, migrants are getting the... 52,000 jobs for migrants. So they, they they lay off or get rid of the other workers and then bring in the illegals to work the jobs. Isn't that great, folks? I mean, we're being taken over at every level. Jobs that Americans don't want. A human resources executive for the company telling Bloomberg the migrants have been, quote, very loyal. They've been uprooted. And what they want is stability. What they want is a sense of belonging. Let's bring in Fox and Friends weekend co-host Pete Hegseth. Pete, good to see you. Yes. But again, lower wages, taking American jobs. This was the reason why Democrats were opposed to illegal immigration 10, 15, 25 years ago. <laughs> but here it plays out. This costs Americans a lot. That's bit. true. It was also the reason why uh, the chamber. Oh, sorry. Hit the wrong button. Congress crowd of the Republican Party was so reluctant to Donald Trump back in 2015, 2016, dependent on importing cheap labor. He said, we're going to build that wall. We're going to stop this. I'm going to put Americans first. Wages will rise as a result. And now you've got an inversion of that with the Democrat Party saying, come on in. And then you've, you've heard glimpses of it, right? When Nancy Pelosi said, who else, who else is going to pick our crops, right? I mean, that's their mindset. And the businesses are happy to do it when there's no e-verifier, there's no consequences. And so how about Americans picking the crops? Americans like to work too, <laughs> but they're just flooding the, the economy with all these people. And it's, and you know, for God's sakes, I mean, these people do need to work and everything. I mean, they need to, you know, help their families and stuff because their countries are getting uh, really just demolished with their governments. But we don't have, America doesn't have unlimited resources here. People are suffering here. We're not even taking care of the veterans that have fought in wars. And some of these, a lot of these people are homeless on the street and everything else. And we're not taking care of our own people. You got to take care of your own country before you start taking care of others. It's just the bottom line. And take care of your family too, first. They, yeah, cheaper labor for this business to produce a product. And it's not an easy job. You know, people that do those jobs, they're dirty, they're tough, but um, Americans should have the first shot and they should That's have a good right. shot. Stage clear. I have nothing against migrants. Anyone that comes to a country legally, you're okay in my book. But what I'm hearing is illegal aliens is right. a no-no word. I'm not supposed to say that. It's went to migrants. Yeah, and, now and that's, I'm that's hearing... another thing, too, just to clarify. Like, I love everyone and everything. You know, we're, we live on planet Earth, and we should be able to go kind of where we want to go, right? But you need to do it in legal legal terms. Because if you're willing to break the law to go into a country right illegally and these people all of these people know that they're going in illegally by the way there's no where's their passports where's their border crossing passports and all that right uh we don't know if these people are criminals and yet there probably is a lot of criminals from other countries that have fled over here right and then what happens to our economy and our our uh, area of the world in america it gets pillaged and more crime and and all this other stuff if you have those bad actors. Now, there's a lot of good ones, but they're not vetted. They're not vetted out, right? And then there's the thing of taking the jobs from, from other others, Americans and stuff. I mean, it's just not right. It's not right, folks. Go to asylum. I mean, would it be right for us to go into another country and take someone else's job? That'd be the same thing, you know, and doing it illegally. 
Yes. Now we know this has something to do with cheaper labor. Probably making a higher profit, but I'd love to hear what you guys think is going on here. Put it down in the comments. Let me know what you think. Now I don't always watch Jesse Waters on Fox News, but he covers this pretty well. Let's see what he has to say on some good points. The AI was about to change drastically, and not for the better. This week, Tyson Foods announced that it will be permanently closing its pork factory in Perry, killing <laughs> around 1,200 jobs in a town of just 8,000 people. So as Perry residents struggle to cope with mass layoffs, Tyson Foods has its eyes on a different class of workers. The company is now offering new jobs to asylum seekers <laughs> in other states like yeah, New York. See, that's what they call it, right, in order for the government to... Uh make excuses to be able to circumvent the laws or whatever and say, oh, asylum seekers, oh, they they fear for their lives. And, and there probably is some of these people that do. But they're, 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 one of the reasons why they're coming over here is because they can't, they can't make it in their own country because their country has collapsed, like Venezuela. Because um, Jeff Watts did a video on Venezuela particularly and talked about and, and showed this channel that showed how they were interviewing the people in the streets and asking them how much they make. And some of these people made less than $25 a month, $10 a month, right? You can't live on that. It's, it's, uh, and where it's leading is into universal basic income, by the way, down the road. But what, is it, what does it mean for the U.S.? It means the Americans are getting screwed out of their own work. It's ridiculous. And why? Because it's corporate fascism. It's fascism because the corporations are doing the will of the government because the very same peop people that work for the government work for the corporations and they own those corporations. Remember, you see, you see the tie-in to why all this is happening? Bloomberg says Tyson's tracking migrants in a massive database. They scroll through the data like Facebook. You see a worker you like, tap hire. They even had a job fair. So you were at a Tyson fair in New York City not so long ago where Tyson was basically making this pitch. What did you observe when you went there? They created a database uh, for these new asylum seekers in New York City. So these people would come in, they'd learn a little bit about the company, and for the most part, Tyson had already gone through their various details of their application. And so many of them, uh, 17 the day I was there, and then uh, another 70 a couple weeks later, uh, went off to Tennessee to go start their uh, new jobs as uh, Tyson production. Uh, workers. <laughs> oh, and the jobs come with perks. Do you guys think that that's fair? Laying off American workers and then giving it to the asylum seekers? I agree with the first clip in Fox Business. American citizens should definitely have first dibs. But it yep. gets even crazier. Not only are they getting the jobs, the health benefits, whatever else they got already. But why? Why would they not want us to have first dibs? Because the corporations can pay less these workers are just happy because they're working and they don't have to pay them even probably benefits or anything like that or very minimal ones. So why would they hire someone else that will do the work for for slave work? I mean, basically, gig work is the same thing. Gig work is when gig work first started. Pe people were making at least decent money. I mean, I knew some people were with Uber make, making over two thousand dollars a week. Now they're, they're barely making uh three to four hundred dollars a week because <laughs> it's getting real bad yeah but that's that's across the board with all of the apps folks all of them get an attorney as well oh and the jobs come with perks not just health insurance tyson's also offering lawyers to its illegal alien workers <laughs> and time off to attend immigration hearings in 2034 of course they're firing Americans and offering perks to illegals. Just doesn't seem right. Farm jobs. I need fields so we can plant the crops. Vegetables would rot in the ground if it weren't, if they weren't being picked by many immigrants. Many. Im why? Why do the immigrants have to pick them? I, I'd go out to the fields and pick pick the uh, the the vegetables. A lot of other people would if it paid enough. <laughs> you know. It's, it's the corporations, folks. And this guy, this, this senator or whoever the hell this is, he's corrupt, is, is all hell. <laughs> Legal immigrants. You see even in Florida. Pelosi, she's another. All of these people you see on here, they're all corrupt. All corrupt. All been paid off and bought by the, uh, the big corporations. Some of the farmers and the growers saying, why are you shipping these uh, 
immigrants uh, up north. We need them to pick the crops. Now, I live in an area where we've got lots of migrant workers. I've got friends that are migrant workers, and we've never had a shortage of people that come up on work visas to pick cherries, to pick apples, to pick pears. <laughs> never have I seen a problem or a shortage. All of those orchards get picked clean every single year, and that's just my area, so that's my perspective. Let me know if you guys are seeing something different in your areas. So what did Tyson have to say in response to this? We we reached out to Tyson for comment, and they said they have a very diverse set of employees, and they're proud of it. Whatever you call what they're doing, <laughs> they're proud of it. Let's hear what Ohio Senator has to say in response to this. Ohio Senator and author of Hillbilly Elegy, J.D. Vance, joins us now. I didn't think it was legal, Senator, to axe American workers and hire en masse. Oh, isn't, it, isn't it interesting that Trump's pick for vice president, and by the way, this was... Like I said, this this uh, video is probably a month, maybe even two months old. So who did Trump pick as his vice president pick? J.D. Vance. These are all people who are all tied into that network from the beginning of the video. Remember the first part of the video, folks? You're starting to see the bigger picture here. Illegal aliens. Well, it shouldn't be, Jesse, and we're certainly going to look into whether we can change that, assuming Tyson is operating legally, <laughs> which we don't even know if they are. We don't know the details of this. All we know, Jesse, is that they are firing American workers and hiring illegal aliens to replace them. This is the entire point of illegal immigration and Republicans. Do you think that Tyson Foods is going to be the only company that does that? What What's happening with, uh, with, with the gig work? They've got gig workers that are taking the jobs by storm. And that's why Americans are having a hard time making ends meet with just DoorDash. My friend James, I mentioned him in the video, you guys know him. Uh, he noticed, and I've noticed so many times when I, when I would sit outside the, the uh, restaurants trying to pick up for DoorDash, and you'd be sitting there and nothing would be coming through, but you'd see five, six, seven, eight, ten drivers in the past half hour, an hour going in, picking up these orders. And it's like, why aren't they giving it to you? That's because it's, it's purposely done. And they also give, give the preference to any of the new drivers. So anyone who's been on for a while, they just screw them over. Is it simply just cheaper labor? It reduces the wages of American workers by replacing American citizens with foreign laborers who are willing to work at slave wages. It has been the yep. plan, as you said, from the beginning. And what this means... And what is that plan, folks? Well, there's many of them. There's many agendas and many plans. But what is the, the main one that I focused on in the original the, the uh, part one of the video was the Cloward and Piven plan. So at least you know what Cloward and Piven is all about. It's a communist strategy plan. And this is what they're doing. This is why this immigration thing is really important. So you understand that. Is the eradication of the American dream. Every time an American <laughs> is... The eradication of the American dream, folks. Did you hear that? The eradication, meaning eradicate it completely. No American dream for anyone. With an illegal immigrant, it means that an American family loses a good family supporting wage. It means that American companies are re literally replacing our own citizens with people who will work for slave wages. That, <laughs> that is not capitalism or a market economy, Jesse. That is the decimation of the American middle class via illegal immigration, and it's happening. And they've said that at the World Economic Forum that they want to destroy the middle class. So there's, there's basically two classes. The, the ultra rich and the very poor and the middle class, there won't be any middle class. What did Klaus Schwab say? He said, you'll, you will own nothing and will be happy. You remember that? <laughs> Over the country. So I know a lot of people question, how can they even do this legally? Well, the skirt tail way around it is asylum laws. Mm. So they're not illegal. They're not even a migrant. They're asylum seekers. Well, that's how right. I understand. That's how they're getting around it, folks. All right. All right. Let's move on to some more about immigration here. According to Customs and Border Protection, this disruption started at about 1.30 on Sunday. And this happened at the Paso del Norte Bridge in El Paso, Texas. Now, this connects El Paso to Ciudad Juarez, Mexico. And CBP says that they deployed physical barriers to, to stop this uh, attempted mass entry into the United States. 
Why? Why are we seeing this right now? Well, you probably remember the immigration policy towards Venezuelans changed in October. And since then, there's been a swelling of Venezuelans in uh, Ciudad Juarez on the Mexican side. Now, why is that important, folks, talking about Venezuela especially? Because Venezuela, a few years ago, had a major economic upheaval, and they basically they went bankrupt over that, right? But that was part of the World Economic Forum type stuff, okay, what they talk about in the agenda. And the people over there, uh, uh, they can't live, they can't, they're not making any money. So what are they doing? They're coming over here. And they're being told, oh, come over here and you can get free stuff, you can get this and that and the other thing. And that's that's just Venezuela. That doesn't have to do with the other countries either. All right, let's move on here. Okay, so this this clip comes from like last year on May 1st of 2023, and this is one of the senators. This is when Title 42 ended, which meant that these people could just basically cross the border at, at will <laughs> or whatever. So it's been, and I'm going to show you some real videos that are good, like it's going to blow your mind. Um, it's unbelievable. We'll we'll get into that, but let me let me roll this here. Thanks. I just want to make a, a closing comment here, if I could. Um, you know, as a physician, I took an oath to heal the sick, and I certainly want us to do our part. But then, as an officer in the military, as a now as a senator, I've taken an oath to defend this country and to make sure she's safe. Right now, the number one most immediate threat to our national security is this open border. And that's why I've called on the House to impeach Secretary Mayorkas. He's derelict in his duties. I'm calling on Joe Biden to come see this problem for for himself. <laughs> Biden is part of the problem. He he's the him and I mean they're just these people are just puppets, folks. They're the ones allowing it too. Like it's it's amazing. It's amazing what's going on. Oh boy, heaven help us. <laughs> We can solve this problem. And I want to bring uh, Brandon back up here one second. Brandon, if you could tell Joe Biden there's one thing that we need to do. Do you need more troops? Do you need more more t technology? What do you need to do for us to secure this border? <laughs> the American public should not shoulder this burden. We do not need more resources. We don't need no more, more technology. We don't need more infrastructure. We have to have policy. We have to go back to the rule of law. Yes. If we have policy, we can secure the border tomorrow. He won't give it to us. That's exactly right. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So you heard that. I mean, this is a seven-minute clip, but I'm, I just wanted to show you that just so you could see what was going on even back in last year. And it's still going on. The border is wide open. Okay. So um, basically, uh, these next clips, because we're coming – to sort of the end of the video, I mean, within the next 15, 20 minutes. But I wanted to play these these two clips, and I was able to download this, so I'd have it just... Uh, I got this uh, these clips from Richie from Boston, Richie from Boston, RFB channel. So shout out to him. And um, he found some really interesting videos, folks. Uh, you're going to definitely want to check this out, Okay. So this first clip here is only about seven, six or seven minutes long. I'm going to pretty much let it play out. And then I'm going to play the next one, which is the more important one. But these are people along the border that went there to film what was going on at the border to see it firsthand. Because people would say, oh, there's no one crossing the border. There's no one coming into the country or whatever, right? And remember, the, the border extends all the way from Canada down and then from, you know, the southern part all the way across the United States. I mean, it's harder to come in from ports and everything, but they come in from boats in all kinds of areas. Th this part is really down in Texas in the Mexico area, right? But it's all over the place. They're coming in from different places. And they're also being shipped in by buses. And I've seen the videos on that. I personally saw the videos of them all loading them up once they get over the border and there's buses that pick them up and then those buses send them to different parts of the U.S., including up north, northeast, west, midwest, anywhere. They send them all over the place. 
I mean, I've just in my town alone, I've seen at least probably 5,000 or 10,000 new uh, people that I've never seen. And they're not from the country, you know, and it's happening all over the place. But they can only, you, that's why they're putting them up in hotels because they can't force them on people's houses, right? Because the people would never take them in. <laughs> they say, hey, I got no room for you. I don't even know you. You know, you could be a, a, you know, a criminal. I mean, who knows, right? Now, part of you, as a human being, you feel bad for people. Who, who doesn't? You know, people are just trying to make it. But our government is encouraging them to come over here and flooding the, the markets in the country with these people so it's harder on Americans. That's why you're having a hard time probably as an American trying to deliver DoorDash and Uber and all this. And even if you go back two, three years ago, the money you were making then is now one third of what you made, right? And it's only going to get worse. All right, let's roll the video here. Here we go. We're in the final stretch, folks, coming up. So real quick, this is from a YouTuber called Oreo Express, and this is live from Sasabe, Arizona. It's a leftist camp, and I just want you to see what kind of people are sneaking into the country, as well as the people from America that are aiding and abetting them. Check this out. It's crazy. <laughs> Take a look. Yes, this is in Arizona. It's about 15 miles east of Sasabe, Arizona, guys. I want you to hear what this arrogant illegal has to say. This is an illegal intruder. This is someone that's broken into the United States. It's just like having somebody do a home invasion on you, but on a massive scale. And you're not allowed to do anything about it, strangely enough. Uh, what country are you from? Me? Yeah. I, mean, I, I better keep it safe now. Keep until, it safe? Well, until, in America. I mean, until, they're about to find out where country you're from. Are you going to take where I'm from uh, by force? No. So I will are, not take you, where I'm from. So these are, are the people that these, these are the people that question? these are the people no, that are breaking no, into your country, no, folks. No, ask me. I answer you. What, what he says. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen to what this guy actually says too. This is, <laughs> I mean the. You know, there's a lot of nice people, but then there's people that you don't know who the hell they are. I mean, they could cause a lot of problems in the future, right? All right, check out what, what this guy says. Amazing. These are the people right here, that kind of attitude. Hey, let me uh, educate you. It's a tripod to hold the camera. So you see, there you go. Violence. So there you go, guys. These are the people that are coming in. Are the ones laughing. It's very easy to find my face, by the way. If you are smart enough, you will know who I am. But you are really not smart enough to know who I am. But soon you're going to know who I am. Huh. Do you hear that? Soon enough, you're going to know who I am. So this guy could be one of those uh, shakes or someone from a country that doesn't like America and... Uh, I mean, imagine what he just said there. He, a guy like this or any of these people that are coming in, right, should be grateful that they're, first of all, they're breaking the law because they're illegally coming in. But they should be like so thankful that someone's not trying to harm them. And I don't advocate that, folks, at all. But like, how do we know this guy's not a criminal in his own country? He even just said like, oh, you're going to soon you're going to know who I am. What does that mean? All right. Listen. Enough to know who I am. But soon you're gonna know. Hold on, here we go. These are the people that are coming in. Are the ones laughing? It's very easy to find my face, by the way. If you are smart enough, you will know who I am. But you are really not smart enough to know who I am. <laughs> but soon you're gonna know who I am. And by the way, why would he hide? Why would this guy hide who he is? Why doesn't he say, oh, my name is, you know, such and such, and I'm a good person, and I, I just want to try to make a living. I mean, why isn't he even doing that? He's being bra uh, he's being uh, bragging about the fact that he's coming from somewhere, and you soon you're going to know who I am. What is that all about? <laughs> wow. Very easy. Terrorist attack, maybe. Terrorist attack. 
So I want all the really smart guys that spend all their time exposing other YouTubers to find out who this guy is. Because like he said, pretty soon we're all going to know his face. His <laughs> face right here. <laughs> this guy just literally made a very, very... It wasn't even a thinly veiled threat against the United States. Right. But this guy and many others are sneaking into the country regularly because Arizona and California are wide open, wide open. Look at the look at how much of this border is wide open in Arizona. Yeah, that's crazy. Look at that. Border first. patrol stops and quizzes see, these. What I love about this video, you would never see this type of video on the news on Fox News or anything. I mean, yeah, they show the border crossing walls, but they don't show where there's a where there's a gap or where the gaps are. Look at that's one gap there, but look up the top, up here, up top here there's another gap there's all of these gaps and it's almost like it's been done on purpose how come the border wall was never uh was never closed plus they have there's videos of people that know how to get up over those walls they have like these these ladders these extending ladders and then they form a chain of people so they can just hop i've seen the videos of it um it's amazing how they get in but i mean it, they can easily get in this way, they just walk right through. People in a, coincidentally enough, a Toyota 4Runner. And notice the enormous wall that's missing from the from the Border Patrol wall or whatever. <laughs> and the 4Runner just takes off. And I'll tell you what, the Border Patrol is not going to catch a 4Runner. Not going to catch mine, but oh, mine's not going to run. By the way, why did, the, why did they, the Border Patrol just take off? Because there's someone filming them, right? And they don't want to be on camera. You think that that's a little funny? How they just moved away? Because <laughs> I got nothing to run for. I'm for this country, not another against word, it. In other words, they're not doing anything to stop the people from coming in. Do you see any? Did you see any police or border patrol that was stopping any of these people coming in? No. They let. They're letting them in on purpose. They're letting them in on purpose. But this is insane. This time, this stuff has been going on for quite a while. And now suddenly, because it's an election year, it's all coming to the public forefront. But the mainstream media is presenting it in a way that doesn't make any sense whatsoever at all. The mainstream media wants illegals flooding in. The mainstream media is backing up this ridiculous organization of scumbags that are in the White House currently. More migrants on terrorist watch lists crossed the U.S. border. Well, of course they would, because why not? It's easy enough. You just saw the massive, massive holes in the border. Texas has finally done something about it, but it's not for long. It's temporary. It's all temporary. It's all for, for pomp and circumstance or to elicit a reaction, a reaction from Americans that don't understand why the government that they pay bazillions of dollars to isn't doing their job. We're sending money to other countries to, to hold down their borders, but our borders are wide open. You may want to keep that in mind or not. I mean, there's an, a, there's, a, there's an entire camp right outside this massive hole in the border wall, an entire camp with vehicles and amenities and everything else. I mean, look at the size of that hole in the border. That's Arizona. So Texas is just pushing everything up to California and Arizona right now. <laughs> there's a lot of people. I mean, how do you not notice a, a community, a homestead right outside this massive hole in the border wall i'm asking the question i don't know if anyone's got the answer oh but now there's a couple of border agents here right here let's see let's zoom in oh yeah these are border agents but what are they doing they're just questioning them right but they're they're letting them in let's see let's go right here wait a minute did i go past it yep yeah. I did. Okay, here we go. Air camp with vehicles and amenities and everything else. I mean, look at the size of that hole in the border. That's <laughs> Arizona. So Texas is just pushing everything up to California and Arizona right now. There's a lot of people. I mean, how do you not notice a, a community, a homestead right outside this massive hole in the border? To be honest, I'm surprised there's not a whole lot more. Like, this isn't even, oh, but I mean, it, they must be coming in you know, slowly, but trickling in, trickling in, and they just make it over the border. But it's like, I don't know where the transfer of the money goes or how they, they get signed up or whatever, but 
I know what's happening. I've seen I've seen the videos of them interviewing people about. It. Actually, I think uh, Jeff Watts from U Ubajit Bay Z, which is Mike Drop Barbecue Channel. Uh, I think he had some videos showing that, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I'm asking the question. I don't know if anyone's got the answer, but. It's an agenda. It's not politics. It's an agenda. It's bad. You hear that? The agenda. Agenda 2030, folks. World Economic Forum. Cloud and Piven Plan. Remember that. Okay, so these are American people that are probably questioning the Border Patrol. Like, what are you doing? How come you're not doing this? And then these guys, I mean, they might be good guys and they might actually care. But there's really not much they can do. They're being told to let them in, you know. Anyway, uh, yeah, so if we could just have, have everyone line up over here, that would be good. Kind of get a count. Oh, you know what it is? That's what it is. They're waiting for transport. They're waiting to be transported to an area. Okay. <laughs> this is what it is. Yep. These people are aiding and abetting into the invasion on the southern border. You want a business card? Like, for instance... What is the Border Patrol there for? What are they supposed to do? They're supposed to repel these people and tell them, what are you doing? Get away. Like, you're not supposed to be here. But they're letting them in. They're just letting them in. You're seeing it live on video. I mean, not live, but, well, it was live. The guy recording it was live. And then Richie from Boston got the, uh, the videos from that. But <laughs> it's crazy. They're not repelling them. They're letting them in. You guys are haters. Haters? Are we love our country and we want to keep it uh, a Then you have the gaslighting people that are, that are, oh, you just hate people, you're racist and all that. No, we're trying to keep the border safe. We're trying to keep America safe, right? Uh, maybe these people will do harm here. Some of them won't. But they're, at the bottom line, they're taking the jobs. They're taking the resources away. They're taking government funds away. What do people pay taxes for? You pay taxes so that you 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 can lose your job and and uh, have your job taken over by people like that. Like it's not it's not right. You got to take care of Americans first. Country. You don't let people. You're not Christians. Oh, <laughs> well, see, they try to attack people. Say, oh, you're not Christian because you don't want to let people in. Listen, you know the Bible talks about how you're supposed to. When even a man is supposed to be the head of the household and take care of his family first, right? God's first, but your family comes second, right, to God. It, it kind of works hand in hand. And then charity and all that stuff can happen when it's able to happen. Uh, but can you go into another country as an American and just walk in or cross the border there? That You'd probably get shot on sight, maybe. Who knows? I don't know. You tell me in the comments. See, the thing is, this is a hotbed topic, too, because some people will defend the fact that the, they're coming in, and then other people will be like, no, it's wrong. It is wrong because the country's not taken care of yet. It, remember, this is an agenda, folks. This is to get everyone hating each other, right, and warring with each other so they have a civil war. That's, that's part of it, too. Actually, heaven, heaven has the strictest immigration policy. Heaven has the strictest immigration. Isn't that, isn't that funny that he just said that? <laughs> heaven has the strictest immigration policy. And boy, is that not true. In other words, does everyone that die dies go to heaven? No. Because if you are not following God's commandments, you're not following the Ten Commandments, you're not, you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus and you haven't been saved from the blood that he uh, shed on the cross and died for all of us, right? I mean, there's a free ticket to heaven if we just follow him, right? But the people who don't and do all this evil and stuff, uh, how come they don't go, get to go to heaven? They go to hell, right? People who were real evil and bad, right? And 
wouldn't that be considered an immigration policy? I mean, who are you going to blame? God and say, oh, God, I hate you because you didn't let me come to heaven. Well, you didn't follow his, his ways and his laws, right? Think about that. That's, I mean, it's, it's funny, but it's sad at the same time. It really is. Yeah, and they're also pissed because the American people went to the border to actually film this stuff. And this is stuff that you will not see in the, in the mainstream media, folks. They'll never show you this. I was lucky to come across it because usually <laughs> they don't want people to even show these videos anywhere. But where do you see the next video, the next part of this video, folks? This is just, we're only one more minute here, and then I'm going to play the final, the final uh, video. Now, this video is a live stream, so it's choppy. This isn't on my end. But I wonder if the smart mouth guy that will soon know who he is ends up in this lineup or if he has simply scampered away. Look at these poor little immigrants and these idiots right here helping them out using Christianity as an excuse. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Unbelievable. But this is what's happening at the other borders currently. Okay. Is there, what happened hold, to him? Put it in the comments section. Okay, so here's the final part of the video, folks. I think this is going to be, what, about, this is 18 minutes long. I'm actually going to let this play through um, because it's important, folks. And this part of it is showing the cartels, like the really bad guys that are coming into the country and stuff. And even these people that talk about how they were trained by the military and stuff like that. This is this is an important part of the immigration video here. So anyways, I appreciate you all coming to the video, checking it out. Let me know in the comments what you think so far. I mean, there's going to be mixed feelings on this, but bottom line, how's your life going right now? You enjoying your life? You love all the nice prices of everything in the stores and you like your nice high rent and how much it costs for everything? Isn't it wonderful? And to know that the government is in bed with all of these uh, foreign diplomats and the whole uh, cloud and Piven plan is being strategized. You're seeing it. <laughs> this is the reason I brought the video to show you. And this is the reason why you can't make any money with the uh, with the gig apps, too. Because remember, everything's tied into everything, folks. All right. Here, let's roll it here. How long? We're in big trouble here. I mean, th these are two of the most dangerous gangs on the planet. They are prison spawn gangs. They, they come out of the muck and the slime of these South American prisons, which are their stronghold country. We're going to be living with this crime wave for decades. And I believe that Venezuela is emptying their prisons deliberately and sending these people up here, just like Castro did in the 80s. For cuánto tiempo han estado quedándose aquí en el Rojo Hotel? ¿Cuántos meses es eso? Now, here, here's where uh, I gotta say something here. This is where this guy is asking how, uh, where, uh, you know, how many months do, do they give you, or uh, how much money are they giving you or something, something like that. He's finding out what what happens when they come in and how, what they're given to be put up here. Like if they put up in hotels or housing or whatever and see what they're given, all right? That's part of it too. Here we go. Oh, so, getting, so he asked her, he asked them, are you paying any rent or whatever? And they said, no, they, they're giving them free free rent. And then he says, and they give you lunch and breakfast? Yes. Yes. And they give the child personal items, diapers, whatever. In the hotel, do they clean the room? See, th these are people that have be be giving, been giving hotel rooms to stay at. Because I told you, in my own town, I know personally, because I've been, I actually applied for two hotel jobs recently and not only that but i when i'm outside there i see them going in and out all the time all the time and those people were not there before let's see yes every day they clean and they, 
¿Todos los días hacen eso? Sí, todos los días. ¿Han podido poder conseguir trabajo ustedes? No, no. No, no, no. Si ustedes tuvieran un problema de medicina, ¿cómo podrían recibir ayuda con eso? Bueno, eh, con una tarea, la, la del seguro de Medicare. Well, with medical insurance, Medicare. Now, here's the thing. Medicare. Medicare is supposed to go to people who pay into the Social Security uh, Act, isn't it? And pay taxes and stuff. And they're being given Medicare and medical, right? Well, how about Americans can't even afford that? We're having to pay two, three thousand dollars a month for uh, some people for health insurance, but they're giving it free. You think that's right? No, y eso no abarca el that seguro que nosotros están para los niños y también nosotros no beneficiamos de eso. Now, by the way, folks, I'm not heartless. Of course, I know people need help and they need medicine and all that stuff. And humanity should be, we should be helping people, right? But when you're in a situation where your country is being infiltrated, divided, conquered and divided, they, they, that's how they do it. It's divide and conquer tactic. Okay, and I told you that it was about the Cloud and Piven plan. And now that you know that plan, now you understand why this is happening. Because the first thing a human being feels is compassion and empathy for people, you know. And of course, you know, and these people right here, they're probably the nicest people in the world. And they're caught in the trap of, of thinking that, oh, uh, you know, they're going to make a better life for themselves. But they're, they're actually, this country is being, the America has been turned into a, basically a third world country, communistic country. It says, did you feel supported thanks uh, thanks to our president? Yes, gracias a nuestro presidente Joe Biden. Bueno, sí. Well, yes, yes, sí, because porque, uh, uh, we are si working. No we are working. Okay, drug cartel okay, took that's them. Those people say they're not working. But there's, we know that the people are working because we see them all the time. I've had conversations with people. And said, hey, how long you been here? Oh, I've only been here six months or a, or a year or a few months. And, and they're getting a job, you know. <sighs> Anyways, all right, let's, let's finish here. Here we go. For these borderlands outside of Aravaca, Arizona. Since then, foot traffic through their ranch has looked like this. Mostly men in camouflage and carpet shoes to conceal their tracks. I have five cameras on five trails. Jim tells me two to five years ago, those cameras caught roughly 250 people a year. Last year, 2,500 people in just eight months. I've been told by intelligence officers with the Border Patrol in this area about 20% are packing drugs. So that's 500, 500 drug packers coming to my ranch. They're here to poison our people. Relenting stream of immigration. Non-stop. Non-stop. Oh, there it is. See see the, see the, how they're getting up over the, the wall? Look at this. It's like some kind of a makeshift um, ladder that they actually can use to get over the wall. So if you think they just come through the, the regular wall that's open, no, they can do this too. Looks like me. Do you, who were... do you think that they would show this? On, on the mainstream media, these are people who have gone to the border to actually record that. Caucasian of European descent, for the first time in 2017, will be in an absolute minority in the United States of America. Did you hear what Biden just said? We'll be an absolute minority, meaning American people, because there's gonna be, we're going to be so in, in, influxed with with illegals, it's it's not even funny. Now, in some parts, certain parts of the states of, the, of America in certain communities may not get super affected uh, because the people who live there are not going to move out and there's no other housing. But what I've seen is that in my area, they're building all types of apartment buildings. All you see is new, brand new buildings going up. And what are those buildings for? It's for all the illegal people. So... It's it's one thing if they got vetted and they were um, came legally to the country, but they're illegal, illegal, not good. Absolute minority. Fewer than 50 percent of America. Absolute minority. Absolute minority. Fewer than 50 percent of the people in America from then and on will be white European stock. That's not a bad thing. 
as a, as a source of our strength. People are afraid of what's coming, and with uh, with all Biden is such a liar, source of our strength. He's a, he's a bumbling idiot. Justification. I'm urging my family, my constituents, be ready for emergency. Have your emergency supplies because something big could possibly happen. In fact, I think it's a matter of when, not if. Take a drive down Los Angeles' Skid Row, filled with tents, people, and growing frustration. If I can get back in to another uh, residence, then I won't make the same mistakes I made before. According to new federal data, a record number of people are now unhoused, more than 653,000, a 12% population increase since last year. So what you're seeing happening live is a thing called the Hegelian dialectic, where they cause a problem... The problem causes a reaction, and then they offer a solution. So we're watching them literally give migrants, illegal aliens that don't belong here, we're watching them giving them anything they possibly need, seven months, 12 months, full Medicare, food they can drive. They're being housed in airports and then sent to all the big cities in America. And we're literally watching these people causing problems all over the world. Because Did you, do you see that? Did you see that, folks? Prepaid, prepaid cards. Hold on. They're being housed in airports and then sent to all the big cities in America. And we're literally watching these people. Snap. Seven, $7.59 prepaid migrant cards. Uh, $12.52 per person per day. <laughs> causing problems all over the world because they want a reaction so they can give the solution. And the solution, as I've shown you before, is called the Great Reset. There you go. Richie from Boston. World Economic Forum has a plan. All elected officials are beholden to this plan. And we talked about what the plan was in part one, right, folks? In the last 10 years, they have successfully been able to turn the right against the left amazingly. But sadly for them, there's still a bunch of people that still believe in freedom. Freedom to roam this earth unencumbered by people that want to suppress you and force you to do things that you don't want to do and things that you don't believe in. So all sellout presidents, all of them, all corrupt all bought and paid for by the big corporations. Every one of them you see there. They have to force the issue, and they have an agenda. It's called Agenda 2030. And in order to get to Agenda 2030, they need to start a war to get rid of the people like myself and probably like you guys that are listening. And in order to do that, they're flooding the country. They're absolutely flooding the country. When we're, our country is already overflowing. Ever since the quote-unquote pandemic, I have never seen more homeless people in every state. It used to just be the warm states, but now it's absolutely every state. Homelessness is off the hook. And the numbers they give are low. Because who's going out there and counting them? Nobody, really. They're just guesstimating. So while American citizens die in the streets from homelessness, from hunger, from thirst, from drugs... These illegals are brought in and given everything like they're movie stars. And the sad thing is, is these aren't poor little hardworking women and men and children. Most of them are hardcore military age men from countries that we don't have a necessarily good rapport with. People aren't seeming to catch on to that. They're calling it a quote unquote influx of migrants. It's an invasion and a facilitation of illegals. Military-aged men, straight up, and that's for a reason. U.S. southern border is being flooded by millions, 
not hundreds, not thousands, millions of illegal immigrants. There have been more than a million encounters since October. Just after sunrise, we saw the first group of migrants make their way from Mexico through a gap between the 30-foot steel border fence and rocks, Ooh. ducking under a bit of razor wire and into the United States. 30 minutes later, a smuggler's SUV raced along the border fence and dropped another group at the same spot. Over four days, we witnessed nearly 600 migrants, adults and children, pass through this hole and onto U.S. soil unchecked. Now, so while they- I want to say something, too, personally, about being, you know, a gig worker, because I worked for Amazon, and I mean, I still have Amazon Flex as an app. And during the time that I did Amazon, I was able to see <laughs> unbelievable uh proof of of illegals because there's certain towns in even in massachusetts here where i've gone to like uh lawrence and drake it these are towns that i'm naming um haverhill and not, the whole area was 90 percent if not 95 percent um just migrants uh, and most of the time when I would walk into stores, whatever, grab a, a soda or something, when I stopped, everyone was speaking in a totally different language, you know, into in uh, Spanish or whatever. And, I mean, I love everyone. I, for God's sakes, my, my ex-wife was from Brazil. I mean, but what I'm saying is, is the plan of what they're doing is flooding the entire country, right? So there are certain areas in certain towns that have been taken over completely by people who, illegals. I mean, if you're legal in the country, that's one thing. But then if you're illegal and you're living here and they're giving them all of these things, do you think that that's right? That they get all of that stuff? I mean, what about the American people? What about people who are already homeless out on the street that are suffering? How come... They're not helping the Americans. They're helping the immigrants. That's the pro- That's one of the biggest problems too. But remember, it's a big plan to get everyone to hate each other. So we start. So they'll start a civil war, and then then they come in as the problem reaction solution. See, the problem is here. Now the people will react. But what's the solution to the problem? Right. That's what you need to ask yourself. The entire world is focusing on Texas and how Governor Abbott has decided to finally, after all this time, close the Texas border. That hasn't done anything. These immigrants are still getting in illegally and they're still being facilitated by the government. It makes no sense unless their, their, their goal is depopulation of America, meaning get rid of people that think about the Constitution Pledge allegiance to the flag, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. America is a laughing stock right now, whether you know it or not. Not everybody else's countries, governments are more concerned about the micro, micro minority of LBGTQ plus whatever the F than the United States. That's for a reason. Keep people divided, divide and conquer. And that's exactly what they're doing. And I'm going to show you three things that will back this up because they use a thing called predictive programming. I've mentioned it before, but at some point you've got to open your eyes and understand this is what they're telling you. For instance, the beloved President Barack Hussein Obama. And if you if you break that down in Hebrew, it means lightning from heaven which is just a kind of a strange thing, but I'll leave it at that. Barack Hussein Obama and his lovely wife, Mike Michelle, produced a movie on Netflix called Leave the World Behind. Now, as irregular as it is to have an ex-president and ex-first lady to be putting out a movie like this, this movie is insane because this movie encompasses everything that every expert has ever warned us about living in an internet of things type world where the internet goes out, cell phones go out, Tesla cars start driving themselves, all sorts of crazy things happening. 5G microwave internet starts letting off all sorts of crazy tones, etc., etc. It's an end of the world scenario that ends up in civil war, period. This just came out. Leave the world behind. Something you might want to check into, but it's just, it's the strangeness of it all that 
during Obama's presidency, so many quote unquote conspiracies came to the forefront. And in this movie, they show it all, how it all could play out and end up in civil war. Crazy, but it's called predictive programming. It teaches people how to act. There was also a movie that came out called Civil War, and that came out last year. You see how they're program, program, uh, programming us to, you know, know that that's what's coming? Because it is just a matter of time. When, right? When all the lights go out, when the internet goes out, when the cell phones go out, when you have no money in the bank, you can't get gas and you can't buy food, and it's American against American. A good wholesome movie, something that the president can surely stand behind because he's a good guy, right? Barack Hussein Obama. So that's one thing. But let's go to the next thing. There's a military website that was out for the longest time. It still is out. It's called Deagle.com. And Deagle.com is a legit site. But thanks to the mainstream media in the last few years, once we started showing light on this years ago, they were like, yeah, that's not a real site, etc." Well, the sad thing is, is it's a definitely a real website. And they, for what I'm about to show you, they claim they got hacked in 2014, and that's how this whole thing happened. But take a peek at this real quick. Eagle Corporation is a military contractor having close ties to U.S. military intelligence, which collects data for high-level decision makers, including agencies like the National Security Agency. In 2014, Deagle released a confidential report forecasting massive population declines out to the year 2025, especially in Western countries, huh. including the U.S. Countries like the U.K. and Germany would likewise see similar drastic decreases. In Why would there be a depopulation uh, by 2025? Ask yourself why. <laughs> population. The study mysteriously disappeared from Deagle's website in March 2021. Was the report conjecture, speculation, or just someone wanting some kind of reaction? But at the very least, the obtained 2014 report from Deagle should be examined. If the Deagle calculations turn out to be even close to correct, the most unsafe places to reside over the next three years will be the U.S. and the U.K., followed by Germany and then the rest of the EU nations. So maybe you know about this or maybe you don't, but this has been around for a long time. And back in 2014, I covered this when it was showing that America's population would be cut by two thirds, two thirds, over 200 million people just disappearing. So when lots of people, when this started gaining traction back in 2014, when I first started talking about it, after a while and right before the pandemic came out, they changed the website and claimed it got hacked. These guys work with Stratfor Global Intelligence and the United States military and militaries all over the world. That's what they do. But if you try to look it up now, you'll instantly get somebody like Hookers and Coke Snopes telling you that it's not true. It's not true. Look around. Open your eyes. Why are they catering to illegals? Not only allowing illegals in, but instantly, the minute they hit the ground, they put them on a bus and they send them to the largest city possible and then shower them with free rent. All the rules and laws that we have to abide by and that we pay for to protect <laughs> don't apply to them. And God for yeah, and I've even heard that, you know, illegals that end up getting cars or be able to drive, if they get pulled over and they, you know, have a uh, traffic violation or something, they, they don't even do anything about it. Regular citizens, would, if you were driving without a license, if you were uh, driving unregistered, uninsured, you'd be arrested, but they don't do that to the illegal people. It, literally, if one of these people decide they want to just break into your house and you defend yourself, guess who's going to jail? It ain't going to be them. Think about it. They're bringing in their own personal army, seriously which is why almost all of them are military-aged men. But let's move on to the next thing, shall we? The amount of retired military generals, colonels, etc., that are saying that 2024 there will be a civil war is unbelievable. Hmm. You can just sit here and Google it all day. Now, the thing is, is everyone believes that Trump, as long as we get Trump back in an office, everything will be fine. Let me tell you a little secret. A 12-year-old girl literally figured out successfully, a 12-year-old girl figured out successfully 
that all the presidents, all of them, are related. Great things. <laughs> yeah, for- did you know that, folks? I mean, I had known that for a while, but I didn't know that up in t- past 10 years ago. I learned it within the past 10 years that all presidents are actually blood related. History. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, William Howard Taft, and President Barack Obama. One young girl traced them all back to one common ancestor. They're all cousins and all grandsons of John Lachlan. It's the first family tree of its kind, pouring through more than half a million names for months. 12-year-old Bridge Ann D'Avignon. Dis- That's why no one becomes president unless they're part of that big club, by the way. And that's why both sides are corrupt, which I've been telling you. Covered that all the U.S. presidents, except Martin Van Buren, are related to the former king of England, John Lackland Plantagenet, signer of the Magna Carta in 1215. Mildred Reed is his first great-grandmother on George Washington. And on Obama, Mildred Reed is the 10th great-grandmother. It started as an assignment to research her own lineage, tracing it back to roots in France. But Bridge Ann wanted to branch out. Well, I think we just all go back somewhere, or it's just a matter of proving it. She started with George Washington. But unlike other professional genealogists that only looked at the male family lines, Bridge Ann was able to link the presidents together using both male and female ancestry. Before this, historians had only been able to link 22 family trees. She uh, kind of created a triumph of women's studies here. Bridge Ann also figured out she's an 18th cousin of President Obama, something she hopes to be able to share with him in person. I've written a letter to Obama, but I just gotten standard reply. I hope to meet the president and like explain it to him. In Paso Robles, Adam Rakusin, <laughs> Central Don't Coast worry, he knows. It's a big club and you ain't in it. <laughs> you and I are not in the big club. And they all come down from an English king. You see what I'm saying? And Trump isn't any different. I'm sorry to tell you. Trump's allegiance is not to America. Trump is a Zionist, just like Joe Biden is a Zionist. Even if Trump were legit, he's never going to make it into office because this event's going to happen prior to this so that an election can't happen. But this is what Trump's real, true allegiance is, and it's not to us. So these awards are given to me by the Jewish community for different things. And this is the Tree of Life, which is a very big award in terms of... uh, Everything that I stand for, it means so much to me. And a lot of times I'll have friends of mine, a lot of times I'll have friends of mine come in, Jewish, and they will see the tree of life and they'll say, wow, what a great thing. Likewise, right over here, this is the Shalom Humanitarian Award, and that was presented to me. By the way, Trump is not Christian, by the way. He's said it in a video before. I'll try to bring that video to you so you can see. Also. And these are different awards I've had over the years uh, for different things I've done. Now, I know people aren't going to like hearing that whatsoever at all, but I've been on YouTube for a long time. 15 years is a long time to be on YouTube. 14 years, I'm sorry. And uh, the story is, is we predicted this stuff. And when the pandemic happened, so many quote unquote conspiracy theories became fact straight up. Straight up. And Trump is just playing his part. I'm sorry to tell you. That's where we're at right now. I'm risking my entire channel straight up for this because it's not getting monetized. YouTube's already given me three copyright strikes just testing uploading this video. But I don't care. If there is no country, nothing else matters. And we're losing our country by design right now. This is what these people want. And you ain't part of the program anymore. Sorry to say. They've set up a system that instead of Americans actually standing up for what is morally and obviously right, they wait. Well, we'll vote the next guy in. We'll vote the next guy in. We'll vote the next guy in. Well, they've been stringing us along my entire life. And I'll tell you what, D-Day is right around the corner. And you may want to wake up. At any rate, if you enjoyed this video, at least share it, like it, leave a comment below, and I will return the favor. All right, so now you 
hopefully understand. I know it was a long couple of videos, and this one was kind of long too. But I hope that's opened your eyes to what's what's going on, folks, because this is one of the reasons why you can't make money in the gig economy. But that's just a small percentage. It's way bigger. It's so much bigger. Can't you see how big this problem is? It's it's enormous, and it's only going to get worse. So I hope this video has helped you in some way. I hope you help others and you share it, share the information, and uh, let me know in the comments what you uh, what you think. And stay tuned for some more videos. I'm going to be putting out comment videos and things like that as well. Hope you're all doing well, hanging in there. God bless all of you, and thanks for listening. I'll catch you guys and gals on the next one. Take care, folks.